Hey guys, it's me, Mario, and today we're going to read the prologue of Tusk, the Mighty Mammoth. How you guys doing today? Hope you're doing well. I sure am. I have to refill that soon. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tusk the Mighty Mammoth Prologue <clears throat> Feel my blade, Marco slashed and stabbed with his wooden sword, made from the bread, made from a tree branch. There! I have defeated another enemy of the Gorgonian rebels. His mother's voice rang out from the nearby settlement. Marco, get back on watch. With a sigh, Marco crammed his, wood, his wooden sword into his belt and climbed. And climbed back up the lookout tree. An oak that stood at the edge of the forest. From its branches, he could peer down on the small rebel camp where he lived. Two, two ads in a row. Never, never experienced that before. <clears throat> From its branches, he could peer down on the small rebel camp where he lived and see right across the forest, all the way to the northern hills. The rebel camp was in a heavily forested part of Gorgonia. The leaders of the rebellion came here to make plans for the overthrow, overthrow of Malville, the Dark Wizard. Marco's, Marco's job was very important. If he spotted any Gorgonian guards, his task was to run and warn the sen seniors. The men and women who uh, governed uh, the camp. The rebels' weapons would be thrown into a pit and covered with leafy branches, while the leaders would quickly disguised themselves as ordinary hunters and traders. Marco sifted in his perch. He pulled his tunic close about his neck to warm, to ward off the cold wind. A movement on a far hilltop caught his eye. He peered into the distance, but couldn't quite make out what it was. He climbed higher, then gave a gasp of amazement and delight. It was a huge creature covered with scales that shimmered. Vast leathery wings stretched wide, dark against the red Gorgonian sky. Puffs of white smoke came from its nostrils. A dragon, Marco murmured. He never had seen a dragon before, but he loved the stories he had been told of the battle, of the beautiful creatures, of the beautiful legendary beasts. And the creature that stood on the far hilltop was most defiantly, definitely a dragon. It's amazing, Marco said, but where had it come from? Where? No... There were no dragons in Gorgonia. He had to let the sen seniors know about what he had seen. He was about to clamper down the tree when he spotted a disturbance on the far edge of the forest. Trees waved and shuddered as though something huge were pushing through them. As he watched, a gigantic creature came stumping out of the forest. 
It was a mammoth as large as a moving house, its back covered in thick brown hair that hung in the shaggy tangles to its feet. The mammoth lifted her head, sending her trunk thriving up into the sky as she led out a deep battle cry. Then she thundered up the hillside towards the dragon. Marco could see scars and old wounds on the mammoth's ears. But what he especially noticed were her long, curved tusks. As she charged, they sparkled and glittered like gold. The dragon turned, lifting his head. Then he opened his wings, preparing to take to the air. But it was too late. Her head, her head down, the mammoth crashed into the dragon's scaly side. She jerked her head up. She jerked her head up, catching the dragon with her long tusks, heaving the startled beast in onto its side. Marco watched in dismay as the mammoth wrapped her long trunk around the dragon's neck and dragged the helpless creature into the forest. Let him go, Marco shouted. The mammoth's head lifted sharply. Marco gave a gasp of alarm. The monster had heard him. Small red eyes peered across the forest, filled with anger and evil. Then the beast charged through the tree, through the trees, pushing them aside as she headed straight for Marco. The oak shook as the evil mammoth's huge head hammered into its trunk. There was a tearing noise as the deep roots were wrenched out of the ground. The tree began to tilt at a dangerous angle. Marco lost his footing and hung on with his arms. But the beast had struck the tree with such force that her golden tusks had become embedded in the trunk. She twisted her head, trying to pull herself free. A thick, clear liquid was oozing from her tusks and dripping down from the tree. It gave off a terrible, toxic stench. The tree was now at such an angle that Marco could let go and drop safely to the ground. Picking himself up, he raced back to the village. But as he ran, he saw something else that made his heart thud. Marching along the track was a campion company of Gorgonian soldiers. That was the prologue of Tusk, the Mighty Mammoth. Hope I didn't stutter. <laughs> I hate when I do that in videos. Surely you guys would as well. So. That was the prologue of Tusk, the Mighty Mammoth. And I hope you liked my read through. Yep. Many people probably don't watch these videos until much later, after they, you know, watch the previous series. This is like series three? Yeah, series three. So many people don't watch my la latest videos, unless I think it's a Draganian video. <laughs> Dragania video. But yeah. Hope you like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you guys are interested in more Beast Quest videos. Cause I, that's the that's the only thing I'm I'm doing right now. Beast Quest videos. <laughs> Since I finished the Great Dragon book a while ago, 
I don't have anything else to upload, except for Beast Quest, so... <sighs> I'm the Beast Quest reading man, I guess. <laughs> well, bye-bye. <sighs> Excuse me. Bye-bye. Right,